Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to ECMATH. Glad you're here today. We're coming to you live from fifth period. Uh, so my students are here. Uh, I'm not going to show you them because of student privacy reasons. But if you are in my fifth period class and you're missing class today, well, now's your chance. Uh, so we're going to talk today about tangent graphs. And here we go. Um, so say I wanted to graph, uh, identify what the graph of y equals tangent x might be. Uh, the first thing I would do is check out some various values. I would probably think about a circle first. So let's draw a circle. Uh, how do we do it? I would probably think about a circle. If you go around the circle and label the angles in radians, we have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Those are going to be like the four most important angles on a circle, just like they were with sine and cosine graphs. So it's kind of every graph here comes from this circle. Uh, but when we go around and label the values, with sine and cosine, we just looked at the x and y coordinates. But here, I'm going to think for everything, every uh, angle, I'm actually going to think about what is y over x, since that's the definition of tangent, right? Tangent of theta is defined as y over x, or if you want to think about it in triangle terms, opposite over adjacent. So that's why tangent is y over x. So at this point, uh, zero radians, y is zero, and x is one. So 0 over 1 is 0. So it seems like our tangent value is going to be 0. At pi over 2, uh, y over x is 1 over 0. Uh-oh. 1 over 0 is not 0. It's undefined. I'm going to use that little uh, null set symbol as a shortcut for undefined. At pi, we're back to 0 over negative 1, which is 0. And at 3 pi over 2, uh, we're at negative 1 over 0, which is back to being undefined. So now let's say I wanted to sketch out a graph of tangent. Hi, team. Hi and bye, Dr. Powers. Apparently, Dr. Powers just walked in for everyone on stream. Um, I wish he'd stop to say hi. That would have been a welcome visitor. We'll get him next time. The special guest star. I would love to get Dr. Powers on stream. That's not a promise, but I would love to get him on stream. Um, all right. Are we still okay graphing? Let's keep graphing. Um, so if I was to scale my axis and radians, I might do something like, uh, I'm going to be a little flexible and go pi over 4 pi over 2 out here and just give myself some space because I'm not quite sure like what's really going on in between these values at this time. So just giving myself some extra space. I'm also going to go negative. You can think about that 3 pi over 2 angle as also being negative pi over 4, not 11, but pi over 4, 2, negative pi over 2. Uh, and that's actually helpful because it's going to show us the symmetry of the graph a little better uh, to have a full sort of region between the undefined values. The undefined values are going to kind of be like a boundary on the table. OK, so what did I learn from plotting just this kind of yellow quadrant? Well, I didn't learn very much. I learned that there's a 0 at 0. And I learned that there's an undefined at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Now, from what we know about like rational functions, so for example, uh, x over x minus 3. At x minus, the x minus 3 causes a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, because the bottom of that fraction is undefined. Well, why are we undefined? Because we have a 0 on the bottom of the fraction. So we're going to have the same feature here. We're going to have a vertical asymptote appearing at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So we're starting to build this graph of tangent, right? We've got some asymptotes, we've got some zeros. At this point, we still don't really know what could go on in between here. Like, we have literally not enough, too, too much. We have literally not enough data, right? The graph could, like, 
That could be the graph for all we know. So let's get some more points. Let's get some more points. Let me go back to the circle for it. One, oh there, whoa there. One other value that it's really easy to find the tangent for, tangents for are the 45 degree angles, the pi over four angles. So what if we add those into our circle? Then the tangent here is y over x. Well, the y is one and the x is one. So the tangent value should just be one. And down here, the tangent value is y over x, but one of them's negative, so the tangent value is negative one. And if you were to continue all around the circle, you'd get the same pattern, negative one in quadrant two and uh, positive one in quadrant three. Now those give us some values. Oh, I lost my axis. We're just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna say, oh, that's maddening. It moved. Uh, so we're gonna plot those one values. I'm gonna make a mark one right here. We said at pi over four, the tangent value is one. And at negative pi over four, the tangent value is negative one. Move that. Now we're starting to get a better sense of what the graph might look like. Uh, Cause we're sort of got some data points. Now, isn't there still a possibility that the graph could like, I don't know, do something like that or. So what I would encourage you guys to check out is maybe test out three pi over eight and one pi over eight and just get some extra data points. Um, but for the purpose of time, I'm gonna just shortcut this and tell you that one pi over eight has a tangent value right around here, uh, a little less than one. And three pi over eight actually has a tangent value of something like 2.4, I think it's, or 2.7 if I remember right. And the negative versions have similar tangent values Something like this. And so what does the graph of tangent actually look like? She looks like this. Not quite like that. Goes smoothly through the ones and negative ones. And then up and back down. So that's the first period, one period of the graph of tangent. But that was only half the circle. I now need to talk about or do the same thing or like the left half of the circle. So the left half of the circle started at pi over two and went out to three pi over two. Three pi over two, we were also undefined. There was also a zero, there was also a zero in the middle. We also went to negative one and one. And so the graph of tangent just repeats. And the idea is basically the tangent graph repeats every half circle instead of every full circle. The period of the tangent graph is pi. So we'll say the period is pi. And you can measure that by looking at the distance from the asymptote to the asymptote. You can also measure that by looking at the distance from the zero to the zero is pi. And then the reason that's true is pi is one half circle. And that's kind of the parent graph of tangent. We'll put it all in one spot. And it does continue off uh, infinitely to the left and right in both directions. I'd encourage you guys to like go graph that on Desmos at some point and really see what it looks like. Maybe uh, once we get all of the cotangent graphs, we'll do some Desmos and, and show you guys what those look like too. All right. Now we're gonna talk about the graph of cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent. So there's a couple ways to think about cotangent. Um, the best way is to think about cotangent, uh, remembering that cotangent of theta is defined as x over y, the reciprocal of tangent. Um, but it's better to think about as x over y than as one over tangent. Because if we start doing one over tangent, then we get like some like undefined values from tangent that get weird. So we're just gonna go back to x over y and then go back around to our unit circle. Um, so our radians were zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, which we also call negative pi over two. And then we'll do the coordinates, x over y. So x over y at zero is false. One over zero, which is undefined. 
uh, x over y at pi over 2 is 0 over 1 or 0. This is going to be negative 1 over 0 or undefined. Down here, we're going to be at 0 over negative 1, which is just 0. Uh, now, we could go ahead and plot the asymptotes and zeros of our graph. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and plot the asymptotes and zeros of the graph right now. So we'll go 0. Extend my axis all the way out to 2 pi over here. Uh, so the undefined values happen at 0 pi and 2 pi. So we'll do, I'm gonna do like a squiggly line for my asymptotes this time. All right, so we have 0 pi and 2 pi. Then we'll plot the zeros, which are directly in the middle of the asymptotes. That's a pattern that's always going to be true, is that if you plot the asymptotes first, then you plot the zeros. The zeros are always at the midpoint of the asymptotes. So I think the asymptotes are usually the easiest things to find and start your graph, just when you're drawing this artistically. But now let's check out something really weird about cotangent. If I go to my circle and plot the tangent values at the pi over fours, I go one, negative one, one, negative one going around. And that first cycle of the graph between the first two asymptotes is like the top half of the circle. So when you plot out the ones and minus ones from that like top half of the circle, ooh, 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 don't move graph, okay. When you plot out the ones and minus ones from the top half of the circle, they go right there. Look at this. And same on the bottom half of the circle. So we're going from one and then minus one. So it turns out that the graph of cotangent, not only does it have different asymptotes as tangent, it's also decreasing where tangent was increasing. Just because of the way that the graph kind of spins around the circle with different values. So here's your parent graph of cotangent. And it would continue over here. And it would continue over here. So they do continue off infinitely in both directions. You should put arrows on the ends uh, of all of your little uh, branches of tangent and cotangent to show that it's going uh, infinitely up and infinitely. Let's fire up Desmos and just take a look at the graph of tangent. So we're gonna do y equals tangent x. There's our graph of tangent. Like, right, so you can see what I show you on the Desmos, it, you can see it goes kind of infinitely in both directions. If I zoom out, my computer's gonna love this. You just get more and more tangent. If I plot cotangent, you can see it's, it's uh, now a decreasing function instead of an increasing function. But also importantly, uh, oh, no, no, projector mode, that's what I want. But also importantly, the asymptotes are different. The asymptotes are shifted over. So it's not just that tangent is a reflection of cotangent, uh, it's actually that it's sort of like a reflection and a shift if you wanted to transform one into the other. All right, we're gonna pause here.